Hello everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to take a terrible plan and we're gonna make it much better. This is a 1,008 square foot newly built high rise apartment in the East Village in New York. Now it has a lot of problems that stem from the geometry of the building. Interestingly enough, this is a beautiful unit, has lots of windows along two sides, beautiful views of the New York skyline. However, the interior layout and the way that the geometry has been rationalized is really problematic. So let's have a look at some of the design issues together and then we're gonna fix the plan. Starting out with the front entry, you walk in the front door and you smack right into the entry closet which is basically a drywall box plunked onto the wall. I hate it when people do that. When you come into the living room, it's kind of sad because the living room is very, very inwardly focused. The couch faces towards the TV and there's no sort of reference to the beautiful skyline which is outside and the main reason why you're buying the unit. Now the kitchen, is also very strangely designed. It has almost no storage. It's very tight between the peninsula and the back counter. And look at how far away the sink is from the dishwasher. The dining room space is also a problem. It only fits a round table. If we were to put a rectangular table, it would be too tight against the door to bedroom two. And speaking of bedroom two, this proximity to the dining room is really bad. And there's not enough room to fit the bed in this bedroom because the closet door is gonna smack into the edge of the bed if it's fully open. Now speaking of badly designed bedrooms, the master I think is a really huge problem. There isn't enough room for two end tables. So they have shoved the bed into the corner with one end table. And if you're single like me, I think this is where you would cry yourself to sleep every single night, which is just terrible. So there are a lot of things that we need to fix with this plan. So let's clear everything out. Wow, it looks better already. Interestingly enough, it's a really good space to work with. I think where it got off track was where the bedrooms were decided to be placed. And we have to think about this very carefully because bedrooms are about 10 feet by 10 feet. And there's really only one or two places you could put it because they have to be up against the window. So this is where this design has placed the two bedrooms along this wall. Now, the problem with that is that ends up meaning that there is this sort of triangular space which they made into the dining room at the top, which I think is really misguided and where the whole design went off track. So if we were to move the bedroom, let's just pretend we could move one bedroom to where the balcony is and the other bedroom adjacent to that, that's not a bad idea. The problem is, is this one bedroom now controls the balcony, which isn't so great, but I do like to sort of play around with other options. We do have to find a spot for the bathrooms in the walk-in closet, and it's a block about this big. So let's just pretend that we could geometrically just shift that and align it with the cat with the column. So I think that is actually an option, but the reason why I don't think this is a good idea is you end up with a very long and narrow space on one side and a long and narrow space on the other. One would be kind of the living room and one would be the dining in the kitchen. The kitchen would be so far back and removed from the windows that I think that that would not be very, very nice at all. So I think we should really go back and consider the original layout, but I think we should tweak it a little bit and maybe this upper bedroom has to move up into where the dining room previously was because if we do that what we can end up with is something that's actually kind of interesting something like this when I draw on the walls we can get a guest bedroom on the top that actually takes advantage of the corner window the master can be on the bottom we can also eliminate the hallway into the master bedroom because remember there used to be this really long hall and now it can come right off the main space so I really think that this is a much better arrangement because when you come in the front door, we now have a very large continuous space that makes use of the windows and the balcony and we've got two good sized bedrooms and good access into both of the bedrooms and I can tell already we're not gonna smack into the beds with any of the doors. So let's work on some of the details now and finish up the rest of the space. I wanna start with the kitchen. We know the kitchen is gonna to have to be in this back area. Starting with the fridge, and I'm gonna freehand sketch all of this and then show you the hard line drawing at the end. We always start with the fridge placement first, so we know the fridge is our biggest appliance. So I'm gonna put it in the corner, and then we can have our countertop that extends all the way along this back wall. We already have a much bigger back counter than the previous design. I also always think it's a good idea to center the cooktop on the back counter. I think it just looks very, very good. And we can put upper cabinets all the way across. So interesting, we've got a little bit of extra space at the end. What I'm gonna suggest that we do is we make that into a closet and that could either be a pantry space or it could be the front coat closet. And I like it because now we have a block of storage which is very space efficient. 
island. We need to place the island and look at this. The structural column is there. I think the structural column is a great landmarking tool. We can bring our island out. I'm going to align it with the edge of the counter. I'm going to extend it past the column so we can kind of integrate it into the column. I think that really makes sense of the structural column so it doesn't feel like it's an obstruction. That means we can put our dishwasher right next to the column and we can put our sink on next to the dishwasher and we still have lots of room for extra storage. So I think this is actually a really good kitchen layout. It's appropriately scaled for the size of the unit. I've also now created a separate closet for the laundry, which is interesting because it is off the kitchen but kind of in its own zone. We've got a much better closet for the secondary bedroom that doesn't smack, you don't smack a door swing into the bed. When you come into the master now, you kind of enter the master from this kind of transition zone. You can go into the bedroom or into the ensuite bath. We've got our walk-through closet, which is more space efficient. Now I've moved the wall over a little bit to give us a little bit more room inside the master bathroom. And the reason why I did that is when I'm laying everything out, we're going to have our shower at the end. And then of course we need our two foot six for our toilet. And the rest is going to be a big vanity space. But what I thought would be good, because I've taken out the linen closet, is we could have a millwork linen closet on one end. So that's where we would store all of our linens. And then we would have our sink cabinet. In the second bathroom, we have, of course, our toilet, just a standard layout, and we've got our vanity. And this actually works really, really good. It's very space efficient. When I draw it in hard line, all to scale, it all fits really, really well. So now let's have a look at the furniture placement. Interestingly enough, there's not really a lot of you know, room for discussion in terms of where you would place the bedroom furniture. The master works really well. Now we have room for two night tables so I don't have to cry myself to sleep. I can watch TV and giggle and laugh. There's also room for a chair or a desk or a piece of built-in furniture in the corner, which I think is a nice detail. That allows us to tuck in the closet. Now the secondary bedroom really benefits a lot because when you're lying in bed, you can look out the big window or you can look out the side window. There's room for a desk, all sorts of options with the secondary bedroom. The dining table, it's tight but it fits and it actually makes spatial sense to have it tucked into this nook with the corner window. This would be a nice place to have dinner. So in terms of the rest of the layout, while we've got our big sofa, we have to figure out where we're gonna place it. You could put it parallel to the island, which is one idea. I'm gonna suggest that we actually use the geometry to our advantage. I'm gonna put the sofa up tucked into the corner and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use club chairs. I'm gonna put two chairs which float in the space and I'm gonna put them next to each other with a center table and I'm gonna put a big coffee table in between the couch and the chairs and possibly an end table. So that's what I think that we could do for the furniture layout. And that's one option for the furniture layout. Interestingly enough, I also have this idea for the secondary furniture option, which we could use an angular sofa and we could probably slip in the TV rather than being behind the sofa. It could maybe be on a low console. So that would be kind of a low kind of television. And when I'm standing in the space, interestingly enough, I have a fantastic view all the way around. Oh, I can't see through the wall, but I can see through the dining room. I can see out to the view of the deck. And I think this actually looks much, much, much better. So comparing the original plan to what I think is the much better plan, I'd love to hear what you guys think about this. Did I do a good job? Did I not do a good job? What would you do differently? Please send me your comments. I'm very interested in your ideas and your opinions.